Hey, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon, and today we're going to dive into the different modalities of radiology. We're going to talk about what they are, what they do, how to get into them, as well as where you might work in each of these modalities. So whether you're a student, a new tech, or someone just curious about where you can actually go in this field, then this video is for you. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so of course we have to start off with the OG of radiology, and that is just general x-ray, radiography. This is the foundation of diagnostic imaging. X-ray techs use ionizing radiation to produce images of the bones, the chest, the abdomen, pretty much the whole body. And X-rays are used to diagnose fractures, infections, diseases, and much more. And this can be a fast-paced job, especially in ER and trauma settings. And the education required for becoming a general X-ray tech is completing a two-year accredited program and passing your boards. And the general X-ray tech is the baseline for most advanced modalities. And as an X-ray tech, you can expect to work in hospitals, ERs, trauma settings, outpatient centers, clinics, urgent cares, surgery centers, pretty much anywhere that is an imaging center, even mobile x-ray where you go to different places with a portable machine, or you can actually be a traveling x-ray tech and your um, work environment can change every three months. So now that we talked about radiology, we had to get the OG out of the way, of course. Now let's move into other modalities. Specifically, let's talk about MRI now. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. MRI uses powerful magnets and radio waves to create these detailed images of certain structures such as bones, organs, blood vessels, muscles, and other soft tissues. And MRI exams generally do take longer, so it's not as fast paced as something like x-ray or CT. So to become an MRI tech, you can either go through a dedicated MRI specific program, or you can become a general x-ray tech and then cross train on the job into MRI. And I would say that is probably the most common path is the latter, actually becoming an x-ray tech and then cross-training on the job into MRI because it only takes three to six months or so. And your work settings are pretty much going to be very similar to x-ray, as in you'll be working in hospitals, um, outpatient clinics, or really any imaging center. All right, so moving right along, our next modality is CT. A lot of people call this CAT scan, but it's actually termed computed tomography. CT is pretty neat because it combines x-ray technology with computer processing that creates cross-sectional images of the body. It's especially useful in emergency medicine, oncology, and vascular imaging. CT scans are done pretty quickly, much quicker than MRI, and they're often done for patients with symptoms of strokes, pulmonary embolisms, dissections, and much, much more. The most common pathway for becoming a CT tech is cross-training right into CT. So it's kind of similar to MRI. You become an x-ray tech first, and then you can cross-train into CT usually within three to six months. And from there, you're getting your competencies, and then you have to do some structured education, and then you are eligible to sit for the boards. So again, very similar. X-ray is your first general modality, and then you cross-train on the job into CT and become a certified CAT scan tech or a computed tomography tech. And again, these work settings are going to be very similar to x-ray and MRI, as in you'll be in any type of hospital setting and pretty much any type of imaging setting. All right, so moving right along, next we have vascular interventional radiology and cardiac interventional radiology. These both are really neat modalities because you get to actually scrub in with the doctor and assist in the procedure. And interventional radiology is just a hybrid of imaging and minimally invasive surgery. So as an IR tech, you get to help and assist with these real-time image-guided procedures with the physicians in these sterile procedure rooms. So it's pretty cool. The education for becoming a vascular IR tech or a cardiac IR tech is, again, cross-training from general x-ray. And these work settings will be in hospitals, IR suites, um, surgery centers, or any type of specialized outpatient procedure clinics. So next on the list, we have mammography. Mammotech specialize in breast imaging for cancer screening and diagnosis. Hello, that's Odin, and he's a baby. And as a mammotech, you may perform routine screenings, diagnostic mammograms, as well as assist in biopsies. And the education involved is very similar with the other modalities, as in you can start with x-ray and then cross-train into mammography. And the type of work settings you might work in will be hospitals, um, any type of breast imaging centers or women's health centers, even mobile mammo. So there's a lot of different variety of work settings you can work in as a mammo tech. Moving right along, next on the list, we have sonography or ultrasound. Ultrasound uses high frequency sound waves to visualize internal structures. These ultrasound techs work in real time, capturing dynamic images. 
Techs can get their general credentials as well as specialize in cardiac, vascular, and more. Strong anatomy knowledge and patient interaction is crucial in this modality. So this education is actually a little different than a lot of the previous modalities we talked about. Um, ultrasound is kind of its own entity, as in a lot of times students, if they're becoming an ultrasound tech, if that's their goal, they're going to go into specialized ultrasound programs. It's not very common to cross train from x-ray to ultrasound because you need a lot more didactic schooling. So again, um, if you're looking into ultrasound, you're going to be looking into specialized ultrasound programs. And the type of work settings you might work in as an ultrasound tech can be in your hospitals, um, OBGYN clinics, cardiac clinics, vascular labs, outpatient imaging centers, those sort of settings. Okay, so our next modality we have on the list is nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine uses small amounts of radioactive materials called radiopharmaceuticals to study the processes of the body. It's used to look at the organ function and structure, the blood flow, the metabolism, and more. This modality focuses heavily on the physiology of the body, where I guess you could say x-ray focuses more on the anatomy or the bone structure. So education-wise, this is very similar to ultrasound, as in nuclear medicine technologists usually go to specialized nuclear medicine programs. Um, it's not as common cross-training from x-ray to nuclear medicine. It is still possible, but there's more schoolwork and didactic clinical competency, that sort of thing involved as well. So again, if you're going to become a nuclear medicine tech, it makes more sense to go straight into nuclear medicine rather than start an x-ray and then go into another nuclear medicine program. And your nuclear medicine work settings are going to be very similar to a lot of the other modalities that we talked about. So our next modality we have is radiation therapy. Radiation therapists administer targeted radiation therapy treatments to patients with cancer. As a radiation therapist, you will work closely with oncologists and dosimetrists to use their plannings to align and deliver radiation to the patients with precision. It's a role that mixes empathy, tech, and again, precision. So education-wise, there are specialized programs or primary pathways to become a radiation therapist. You can go strictly to a radiation therapy accredited school, or you can become an x-ray tech and then take another year certificate program to become a radiation therapist. So there are a couple different pathways there to actually become that radiation therapist. And as a radiation therapist, you can work in the hospital cancer centers or pretty much any type of outpatient oncology clinic. And just adding a bonus modality, it's not really a modality, it's actually like a career, but it stems off of radiation therapy is medical dosimetry. Dosimetrists are the ones that actually plan the radiation therapy treatments with oncologists that the radiation therapists actually deliver. They very carefully calculate the optimal dose distribution while sparing the healthy tissue around the tumors. It's kind of a behind the scenes planning job that requires physics, anatomy, and planning software skills. And many medical dosimetrists do start as radiation therapists. So this usually requires a bachelor's degree plus a one to two year medical dosimetry program. Or you can become an x-ray tech and then get your radiation therapy credentials and then eventually move on to get your medical dosimetry credentials by doing a specific medical dosimetry program. And these work settings are going to be very similar to the radiation therapy work settings as well. But as a medical dosimetrist, you do have the ability to work from home or work remote so at times you can be planning from a remote site and those actual radiation therapists will be delivering those plans on site. So pretty interesting type of career. I think it's incredibly like interesting. It would be a fulfilling career, something that I could see myself doing later on after I'm done traveling. But um, yeah, just super cool kind of idea and very fulfilling helping cancer patients. All right, so next we have DEXA or bone densitometry. DEXA scans measure bone mineral density to assess for osteoporosis. It's just a low-dose x-ray and often added to the skill set of a general radiologic technologist. So you can cross-train into DEXA and earn those DEXA credentials, but it's not really a modality like MRI or CT or IR that will like give you a pay bump. Usually, techs that cross-train into DEXA are at like small clinics that are you're required to do x-ray, and DEXA and maybe something else, and they just kind of cross-train you in everything, but it's not a super common pathway for people to take right out of school, like, oh, I'm gonna get into DEXA. It's usually not their first choice because again, you don't really get a pay bump for it, and it's not much of a modality. It's just kind of another procedure almost. So again, that's DEXA. You can get your DEXA credentials, but it's just not the most common pathway for most X-ray techs out of school. And you'll see DEXA scans in hospitals, outpatient centers, or orthopedic clinics. And next up, we have registered radiologist assistant. 
So an RRA or a registered radiologist assistant is an advanced practice radiologic technologist who can actually perform fluoroscopy procedures, evaluate image quality, as well as directly assist radiologists. They kind of bridge the gap between techs and radiologists, and this comes with more autonomy, responsibility, as well as pay. To become a registered radiologist assistant, you must be a general x-ray tech and then complete a master's level RRA program. And the work settings are generally going to be in the hospital or radiology group practices. All right, and lastly, I'm going to throw in PACS administration. And this is not a modality of x-ray. This is just more of a new, like a different career path, but I'm just throwing this in as a bonus because it is something that you can do from an x-ray tech. You can actually transition to a PACS administrator. So let's talk a little bit just really quickly about PACS administration. PACS stands for Picture Archiving and Communications Systems. And these administrators manage the digital systems that store, retrieve, and distribute these medical images. This role blends IT and imaging expertise, ensuring that imaging workflows are running smoothly across all departments. To become a PACS administrator, a lot of times x-ray techs just kind of fall into that job role at their jobs, if they're lucky. Um, again, it is more on the informatics side, the IT side. As an x-ray tech, we don't really have that IT experience. So sometimes there are techs that can just transition into that role if the role becomes available and they'll learn on the job. Or there is a um, certification standard called CIIP, Certified Imaging Informatics Professional Test that you can take. And that gives you that type of credential and license. And that will help you learn the IT side of things and give you a better idea of how PACS administrators work on the job. Um, so that is another way. So again, through my travels as an x-ray tech, I've met a lot of PACS administrators that were just x-ray techs that that job opened and they just kind of hopped into that role. And now they're the PACS administrator of their hospital. So super interesting. And um, work environment wise, a lot of these PACS administrators now, especially since COVID, work remote. Pre-COVID, when I was traveling around, I used to always talk to the PACS administrators there because I was very interested in it. I wanted to I was like, what can I do after x-ray? I might want to try something else. I want to try something new. I love learning. And I would look into PAX administration. And I talked to them and they were all x-ray techs beforehand and just kind of fell into those positions. Since COVID, I, when I travel to hospitals, I never see the PAX administrators now. They're all working remote, which is super cool. It's cool to be able to like work from home. So that is a neat thing about PAX administration. I'm starting to ramble again. Here we go. But um, very interesting type of career path that you can actually get from just being a general x-ray tech. All right, so I think it's time to wrap this video up. So this is just a very short kind of breakdown and synopsis of very common modalities in radiology. And of course, each of these modalities has their own credentialing exam. So if you're gonna cross train into something, it doesn't mean you just learn on the job and then boom, you're an MRI tech or boom, you're a CT tech. No, you do have to actually um, pass a board's exam to become a certified tech and earn those credentials. And then you can add those credentials to the end of your name. So. Again, each of these modalities has their own credentials. You have to do the specific um, competency work, didactic work to be eligible to take that exam. Then you take that exam, pass it, and then boom, you are now a certified MRI tech, IR tech, um, CT tech, and so on. And each modality has its own vibe, pace, and purpose. It's just like super neat that you can go into just one thing, general x-ray, and then just kind of stem off into all these other modalities. And it's just, again, very interesting. Of course, there are some modalities that it makes more sense to go to specific programs such as ultrasound, nuclear medicine, possibly radiation therapy, those sort of things. But um, again, it's just very cool that radiology is just general x-rays right here. And then you can branch out into all these other modalities. And a lot of them learn on the job, get paid to learn on the job, which is super, super cool. So whether you're into fast trauma scans, delicate procedures, or high-tech planning, there is something in radiology for everyone. So let me know down in the comments what modality you want to jump into. I hope you guys got something out of this video. Again, this is just very basic points of each modality. I didn't go into a bunch of detail, but I hope you guys got something out of this video. Please feel free to leave any comments, questions, suggestions, and I will see you guys next time. So take care and safe travels.